Welcome again students, Chegu Indran here and thank you for joining me one more time on e-learning with expert. So today we're going to continue STPM Maths T Chapter 1 Functions Bahagian Kedua or Part 2. So previously we already touched on what is domain, codomain, range and we've also seen a few of the graphs and their behavior. So let us first start off the day today with some further examples on where I left you guys and girls previously. So to move into the next example, Let's say we have a function here f of x equals to x plus 3 over x minus 1. So we would like to determine what is the domain and what is the range over here. So as we have seen previously the domain cannot include the asymptote but first before I move into further calculations let us rewrite this expression in a different way now there are a few methods to do this number one would be long division since this is an improper fraction as you can see the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator are equal first let's perform long division over here we have x plus 3 divided by x minus 1 this is 1 so giving us x minus 1 and therefore we have a remainder of 4 so this expression over here f of x can be rewritten as 1 plus 4 divided by x minus 1 now we have only seen previously that it cannot include the vertical asymptote for the domain hence over here we have domain x can be any real number but x cannot equals to 1 because if we input 1 over here 1 minus 1 will be 0 and as we already know we cannot divide by 0 for the range of the function this number is important over here this is horizontal asymptote so my y can be any real number here but y cannot equals to 1 as well. Let us look now at a second method on how to obtain the horizontal asymptote over here. So in number 2 what I'm going to do is we have the original function fx equals to x plus 3 divided by x minus 1 and I'm going to divide each of the terms in the numerator and denominator with x. So let's look at the expression that we obtain by doing that. We have x divided by x plus with 3 divided by x divided by x divided by x minus 1 over x. Now simplifying this gives us a 1 plus 3 over x divided by x over x is another 1 minus 1 over x. So what I'm going to do now would be by taking the limits as x approaches the infinity we see that y approaches 1 which is my horizontal asymptote y now look at this part over here 3 divided by x and x is approaching to infinity that means x is getting significantly large 3 divided by a very big number eventually becomes very small and approaches 0 why take for example 3 over 10 is 0 0.3 3 over 100 becomes 0 0.03 3 over 1000 0 0.0003 so as the denominator becomes large we see that the fraction becomes smaller and approaches 0 same with this part over here as x becomes large 1 over x tends to go to 0 so we are left with 1 divided by 1 which is the horizontal asymptote over here now wrapping it or packing it all up on a diagram over here we have vertical asymptote which is 1 horizontal asymptote which is also 1 and since this is a plus over here we know the graph is going to be on the first quadrant and the third quadrant but let's first find the intercepts 
when x equals to 0 we have 0 0 3 divided by minus 1 so we have y equals to 3 over minus 1 giving us minus 3 and when y equals to 0 we have x plus 3 divided by x minus 1 equals to 0 x plus 3 equals to 0 giving us x is minus 3 so we have a y intercept of minus 3 and also x intercept at minus 3 so at this part of the graph we have a curve that looks like this never touching the asymptote cutting in the x-axis at minus 3 and also cutting the y-axis at a negative 3 now observe how this corresponds to our answer of the domain and range domain means the x-axis so my x value from this line onwards it goes to the right so it takes all real numbers to the right or all real numbers to the left but it never touches this line x equals to 1 and let's look at the range the range we got to look at the graph this way anything above this line is all right and anything below the line is also all right but the graph never touches the line y equals to 1 hence the domain x is all real numbers x cannot be 1 and the range is y is all real numbers but y cannot equals to 1 now moving on to the next example here number 2 I've already given a similar example where we had a student show the solution on the board which was a linear function I just want to do a quick linear function again as a recap over here so let's say we have fx equals to x plus 3 and we are given a domain from minus 2 x to 5 so what's going to be the range of this function so first we input f of minus 2 we have minus 2 plus 3 giving us 1 and then we input 5 so f of 5 is 5 plus 3 giving us 8 hence over here we have the range to be rewritten as 1 f of x in an interval less than 8 what this really means is when my x values are moving from between minus 2 to 5 on a straight line over here so I have minus 2 and I have 5 here my y values here corresponding range is going to move from the smallest value 1 right up to 8 so these values here are called the domain again and this corresponding values on the y axis are called the range now moving on to number 3 let's say we have a quadratic function over here f of x equals to x squared minus 2x plus 5 and they give us a domain over here let's say x is going to be moving from 0 x right until 3 so we want to find the range over here in other words just in shorthand range equals to what so we have seen over here we're given the domain input the domain into the function to get the corresponding range so I have f of 0 here because I start from 0 so f of 0 is going to be 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 5 and this gives us 5 the next value is 3 so f of 3 over here is going to be 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 5 giving us 9 minus 6 plus 5 giving us 8 over here hence a student would say that the range are uh, not all students but a, as a common mistake over here students would always fall into this trap where they say this is going to be the range but take note over here guys and girls this is wrong why let us look a little bit further on the critical point of this given function now we have already learned about completing the square in your form 4 at maths so let's complete the square for this function we have f of x could be rewritten as x minus 1 squared minus 1 plus 5 giving us x minus 1 squared plus 4 so if I were to sketch this function over here now again 
looking at the expression we know that's going to be a smiley face or a minimum quadratic curve because it's a positive x squared over here starting from x equals to 0 to 3 and we know that when x equals to 0 my y value is 5 so I've got a graph looking like this going down and then coming up again so when x is 0 my y value over here was 5 let's label this and then when x was my other extreme value 3 over here my corresponding y value was 8 now I'm sure you guys and girls could already see the mistake here because 5 to 8 is not the range for this given amount of x or interval of x the range should be covering the entire graph and when we completed the square we see the minimum value here when x is 1 I had a smaller value of y that is actually 4 over here so my range as you guys and girls can see is not going to be from 5 to 8 it's going to be given from 4 to 8 because unlike a straight line here the graph had turned and then come up again so this is a common mistake to find the range for a given quadratic function hence the correct answer over here would be for f of x and the highest value would still be 8 for the given domain over here so I guess we have already touched enough on examples of graphs and domain and range. Moving on further, we have something called composite functions. What's the meaning of composite function in Bahasa Melayu? Anybody knows? Ada siapa-siapa tahu tak? Apa maksud composite function? So for the students who have studied this in AdMats in BM, this is called fungsi gubahan. So what is a fungsi gubahan? Okay, first of all, what are the conditions for a composite function to exist? Condition 1, condition 2. Now moving on to composite function over here. A very simple example. Let's say we have got f of x equals to 3x minus 2. And we also have g of x equals to x minus 4. Let's go back, recap a little bit to what I told you guys and girls about functions in the very beginning. That these two axes on the left and on the right are the same variable. These are the same. Meaning whatever change happens here, happens here. So if I were to put a a in here, automatically the a goes in here and this would become 3a minus 2 okay so that's a very quick recap over here now when it comes to a composite function we are going to input one function inside another example what's going to be fg of x so the step to this is do not disturb the first alphabet the f we rewrite this g of x we substitute now what is my g of x my g of x is x minus 4 so i write x minus 4 over here in the bracket uh, now this is a very important step i just told you guys and girls whatever happens to the x over here will happen over here now look in the bracket initially it's x here it's x now the x has already become x minus 4 so this x over here will also become x minus 4 as easy as that so this becomes 3 I just told you guys and girls this x changes to x minus 4 because in the bracket now is x minus 4 I've got a minus 2 there open the brackets we have 3x minus 12 minus 2 giving us as 3x minus 14 okay Using these two functions, I can create another composite function here. GFX. Same step. First alphabet G. F of X, we replace. This is my F of X. 3X minus 2. 
So now we come back to the function. Let me just take this off so you guys don't get confused. Look at this. What's inside the bracket of the g function? 3x minus 2. Initially it was x here. It's x here. Now inside the bracket has changed to 3x minus 2. Meaning this also will change and become 3x minus 2. Both these must always be together. So we have over here changing this x to 3x minus 2 and I have a minus 4. The constant we do not disturb. We always rewrite. So we have 3x minus 6. As easy as that. That is a composite function. But of course there are going to be more complicated composite functions to play around with. Another composite function that we could make out from this would be moving on to number 3 what's going to be f squared of x a function can also enter itself f power 2 means double f the same step as we did here see what i did the first alphabet i always rewrite so the first is a f now the second is f of x the second i replace remember over here my fx i replace the second alphabet is fx, so I replace fx with 3x minus 2. In other words, I'm going to input fx into itself. You see f in the bracket? There's a bracket over here. What is inside the bracket now? 3x minus 2. So this has become 3x minus 2, meaning this x also becomes 3x minus 2. So over here we have 3 x changes to become 3x minus 2 close bracket your constant do not disturb just rewrite expanding the bracket give us 9x minus 6 minus 2 so we have 9x minus 8 over here now as you can anticipate or already know the next example would be what's going to be g squared of x Alice, why don't you try? How do you get an expression for g squared of x? Okay. You got to expand brackets. Yep, there you go. That's it. As easy as that. Moving on to the next part now guys and girls is the inverse function. Before we go in depth into the more formal meaning of the inverse function, let me just give you a brief explanation about inverse function. Let's say there are two sets here namely set A and B. From set A to go to set B, if I use f of x, now to come back from b to a i have to use the inverse function which is inverse f of x there are a few notes to take down here about inverse functions the first common mistake a concept that students usually make is to think that f inverse of x equals to 1 over fx now this is not equal it is equal for simple algebra, let's say a minus 1, it means 1 over a. But it's not also the same for let's say trigonometric, the inverse of x or inverse sine of x does not mean 1 over sine x. 1 over sine x is cosecant of x, but this is inverse function of sine. We will go into more depth of the inverse trigonometric functions when we touch on trigonometry. So first of all, in a layman term, let's say f of x equals to 2x minus 3. And this is the way you go from your home to school. So from your school to get back home, you got to use the inverse function, which is f inverse of x. But first of all, how do we find an inverse function? Now, the name means inverse. That means the x becomes the y and the y becomes the x. So I'm going to rewrite this as 
2y minus 3 equals to x and rearrange this to make y the subject. So we have 2y equals to x negative going to the other side gives us a positive 3 and lastly we have y equals to x plus 3 divided by 2. Now this y has been inversed already so we have got to rewrite it as the inverse function of f of x equals to x plus 3 divided by 2. Now back to showing you guys and girls what did I mean by if f of x is the way you get from your home to the school, f inverse of x is the way you get back from your school to your home. Just give me a number guys number and girls. Number 5. Okay, number 5. So let's say number 5 is your home. So you start from your home which is f of 5 and you want to end up in your school which is 2 into 5 minus 3 we have 10 minus 3 giving us 7 so this is your home and 7 is your school now I want to get back home after I finish my school so the way I get back home will be using my F inverse but what is the route you take put this 7 into your inverse function and let's see if you can get back home so over here we have f inverse of 7 equals to replace the x over here with 7 we have 7 plus 3 divided by 2 10 divided by 2 and there you go i came back home to 5 so you see that's how an inverse function works it reroutes a to b so the inverse brings you back from b to a now let us move into the more formal conditions of the inverse function Number one, let's put a picture to what we are talking about. Let's say we have a diagram here. Simple x and y axis and we're going to look at the line here. And this line is always, and I mean always y equals to x. No other equation. And if I have a function graph here, and this is my y equals to f of x. Now the inverse function is the reflection of y equals to f of x about the line y equals to x. So the reflection here is my f inverse of x. So this is f of x. You reflect about the line y equals to x and you get f inverse x. Now a few other key points to note here is the domain of f of x must equals to the range of the inverse function f inverse of x because it's inverse it's flipped the range becomes the domain and the domain becomes the range so we have the range of f of x over here has to equals to the domain of f inverse x f inverse of x is the reflection of f of x about the line y equals to x So this is what we have established or this is what is meant by the inverse function a few key points over here and an important key point over here is only one to one functions have an inverse now what is meant by a one to one function So this has a test called the horizontal line test. This is quite simple. Let's take a graph over here. Any quadratic equation and let's follow the rule horizontal line this way. If I take a line and I just draw across the graph, it intercepts or cuts the graph at more than one point. In this case, two points. So this is not a one-to-one -one function.
function. So if it's not a one-to-one -one function, no inverse. I can't find the inverse for this function. Let's take a simple cubic look looking graph over here. Take a horizontal line and draw anywhere on this graph. We see that it only cuts the graph at one point. So this is a one-to-one -one function and therefore we say the inverse exists. So simple as that. If you're a one-to-one -one function, you have an inverse. If you're not a one-to-one -one function, you do not have an inverse function. Now, sometimes there are graphs that simply are not a one-to-one -one function, but by adjusting or moving the domain, I could make it a one-to-one -one function so that the inverse exists. Let's take a simple graph that we've already seen in one of the previous examples, x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now, by completing the square, we have x minus 1 squared minus 1 plus 5, giving us x minus 1 squared plus 4. So if I were to make a sketch of this graph, when x is 0, y is 5, so I have a graph looking like this, and having a minimum point at 1, corresponding y value is 4. So watch carefully here guys and girls, if I were to take a line and draw, I cut the graph more than once. That is enough evidence to say I'm not a one-to-one -one function. So this guy has got no inverse. Now how can I adjust this domain so that this graph has an inverse? Now the key point over here to look at is this turning point. If I were to change this function, f of x equals to x squared minus 2x plus 5 and I restrict my domain, I say x is greater or equals to 1. Now when I were to draw this graph, you see the point 1 here, only greater towards the right hand side, so my graph already looks like this. Less than 1, there is no graph because I have restricted the domain here. So this is 1 and this is 4. Now for this graph, if I were to draw a horizontal line anywhere, it only intersects at 1. So therefore this, yes, the inverse exists. I could also alter the domain for the same function here f of x equals to x squared minus 2x plus 5 restricting the domain to x is less than equals to 1 the left hand side of the minimum point over here so if i were to make a sketch now we have this part of the graph up to 1 and this is 4 intersecting at 5 and the same thing happens if i were to draw any horizontal line it only cuts the graph at one point. So for this, again, yes, the inverse exists. So you see, for a graph that did not have an inverse, by changing or restricting the domain, we can make it to have an inverse. Now this is one of the questions that they could ask you in your examination. For what domain does an inverse exist for a given function? Let us look at a more complicated inverse function now. Complicated in the sense that it has got a variable on the numerator as well as the denominator. So for example, 3x minus 2 divided by 2x plus 5 and we want to find the inverse function, f inverse of x. So remember guys and girls, inverse function, x becomes the y, y becomes the x. So let's do that first. 3y minus 2 divided by 2y plus 5 equals to x. Now all I got to do is spin around this equation to make y the subject. So we have 3y minus 2 equals to x into 2y plus 5. 
3y minus 2 expand the brackets over here we have 2xy plus 5x now remember again we want to make y the subject group all the y terms on one side of the equation giving us 3y minus 2xy equals to 5x plus 2 common y factorize 3 minus 2x equals to 5x plus 2 finally we have y equals to 5x plus 2 divided by 3 minus 2x do not forget rewrite the expression as the inverse function f inverse of x equals to 5x plus 2 divided by 3 minus 2x now there's a test or relationship between the function and its inverse first relationship over here is f f inverse of x always cancels off each other to give us the x the other way around is true also f inverse f of x also would cancel off each other just to give us an x now since this is already a long example let's test number one and see if my inverse function is correct so what i'm going to do over here is so we have f f inverse of x the first alphabet is f the second is f inverse which i replace with the inverse function then we have just obtained 3 minus 2x over here now this is f and bracket of the inverse so as we have seen earlier this x now changes to become the inverse which is 5x plus 2 divided by 3 minus 2x hence all the axes on the right hand side has to follow this expression giving us 3 into 5x plus 2 divided by 3 minus 2x and we have a minus 2 over here divided by 2 into 5x plus 2 divided by 3 minus 2x and then I have a plus 5 now moving up here to simplify this expression we've already seen that we got to multiply up and down by the common denominator in the brackets over here and how do we multiply this this goes into each term and now it levels off to become a much simplified function over here when i multiply out here they cancel off we have 3 into 5x plus 2 multiplying to the minus 2 gives us a minus 2 into 3 minus 2x divided by multiplying in here the denominators cancel off I have got a 2 into 5x plus 2 plus 5 into 3 minus 2x let us expand the expression now 15x plus 6 minus 6 plus 4x divided by 10x plus 4 plus with 15 minus 10x watch here guys and girls what happened 6 minus 6 cancel off each other 10x minus 10x cancel off each other any question okay so no question 15x plus 4x gives us a 19x 4 plus 15 is a 19 watch what happens guys and girls 19 and 19 cancel off each other and there we go we ended up with an x which we already know we are going to obtain if my inverse function was correct now i'm not going to show the second relationship but i want you guys and girls to try it out why don't you try f inverse into f of x you should also get your value of x or your answer as x let us now look at a different kind of question that can be asked for inverse function given that fx equals to 5x minus 3 find the value of x such that f inverse x equals to 1 one of one of you guys and girls to try this out keshav why don't you come out and try this question that's right first of all you're finding the inverse function he has made x to become y and y to become x he's rearranged the equation now to make y the subject so once you get the inverse function continue yes he has equated his inverse function to 1 
and now he's got to spin around to find x and yeah that's the correct value of x he got x equals to 2 so that's the right answer over here now well done so the next approach to the same question would be if you really understand what's meant by the inverse function look at these guys and girls we want to find the value of x such that f inverse x equals to 1 let's understand the concept of inverse what is the inverse of plus minus yes so if i've got equation here plus goes over to the other side to give me a minus or divide the inverse is multiplication so the same thing with inverse function if i were to bring my inverse function to the other side of the equation it loses the inverse and i have just f of one f inverse when goes to the other side just becomes f what is f of one if i input one over here i have to input one over here so i have x equals to my f of one which is 5 times 1 minus 3 5 minus 3 and there you go again the answer is 2 so what Keshav did was to first find the inverse function and then solve by making it equals to 1 and if you understand a different approach to the inverse function this could be a faster method but the first method is also correct so with that guys and girls we have reached the end of today's lesson and I hope you, have got, you guys and girls have understood well what has been taught today. STPM is a really large syllabus to cover. There are more complicated questions that we are going to tap on and of course because of the limitation of time we cannot squeeze everything into one video but I wish you guys and girls could use this as a foundation to understand and tackle the more important or more difficult questions and in future, I hope to also upload more challenging past paper questions to assist you guys and girls. So once again, thank you for joining me on e-learning with expert and hope to see you all again soon. Thank you very much.